there we go. So um, this talk, I feel like I don't need to talk actually because everybody else said such great stuff and I'm sort of hypnotized from everyone else, but we'll see what I can throw down here. Um, so this talk is about a little bit about the mirror of perspective that we're always carrying and um, how we integrate our practice and have it show up and land on the world. So this talk was actually conceived at Wonderlust last summer. Um, Carolyn and I were in this beautiful park surrounded by delicious food and delicious people. And we started getting all philosophical, as you do, at these things like, you know, why are we here? Why do we do this? Why do we practice? Why do we read these books? And um, two glasses of wine in, she asks me, she says, why don't you talk about that at the uh, yoga conference? Two glasses of wine in, I agree to this topic. And not really comprehending what I had said yes to. That's a big thing to take on. So I come home and I put a sticky note. I've got an office supply addiction, so of course I put a sticky note that says yoga talk on there and look at it for a few days. And then I dive into the computer and I start doing a little bit of research because that's what I do. I'm a strategist and let's do some research. And I look at cognitive learning theory. I look at all these different things and then I go, screw it. None of this is making sense to me. Um, instead, I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on a journey for the next few months, and I am going to make this my intention. I'm going to meditate on it, and I'm going to make it part of my practice and see what bursts from that concept. So I <clears throat> dive in, and, um, uh, you know, I dive into it, and it gets deep for me sometimes. I end up doing my yoga teacher training in the whole middle of it, of course. And then, you know, I start to take it and reel it back into what I do in my daily life. I'm a strategist, you know, I'm a business strategist and a coach. So that means that my expertise is actually in not having the answer. Pretty good gig, hey? <laughs> my expertise is being able to be quiet enough and provoke you enough to get you to draw out your own truth. So I'm like, okay, so how am I going to bring this talk to life and, and do all that? So I just started to kind of think that it wouldn't be an accident for the people who were going to be in the room. Some of them already left. Interesting, hey? So there's no accidents for those of you who have stayed. And so whatever fell on you was meant to fall on you. I knew that. I, I, can, I can fathom that and relate to it. So I was like, I'm not going to be able to, you know, relish in the research of intellects in this talk. I'm not going to be able to read the scriptures of the sages. I'm just going to have to surrender to what I know to be true. So this weekend is going to offer us a big opportunity to get into our minds, get into our bodies, and, you know, we're going to get our yoga on, and we're going to go on some adventures. But it also is about going in and revealing everything, because... I think we all truly practice because we want a deeper relationship with ourselves. And so from that deeper relationship, we suddenly are able to, you know, be different in the world. And when I look at my esteemed people that I got get to play with here tonight and they are presented their stories and I think that we, you know, we go to the map because we want to feel that we want to get to that deeper part of ourselves. So, um, and then, so how do we translate all this great learning and have it land on the world so we show up a little bit different every day? So what birthed from that was my concept, which I've talked about tons when I'm coaching people, is about perspective. So what I believe is that we are always carrying this mirror of perspective with us. And based on what, which, sorry, based on how we're holding that mirror, it will reveal very different results in our life and it will affect our actions. So I believe this mirror is double-sided. So we've got a for you side of the mirror. So the for you side of the mirror, this is a side that sees the big nose, it sees the belly, it is triggered, it's in reaction, and it's always keeping you seeking something that never allows you to feel satiated. It's, it likes to hang out in that outer world. And so then we also have the other side of the mirror, which is the for you side of the mirror. So when we're holding up this side of the mirror, 
we're able to actually see our inside and our soul. We're able to go to that deeper space where the, the messages that just know start to come through. You are triggered, but it's in a different way. It's much more revealing of what you're supposed to see. So <laughs> we're always carrying this mirror of perspective with us. So I'm going to be, have be a big confession for you right now. I am not a swami of sitting in the mirror of my own perspective. As I discovered on this journey, thinking, oh, yeah, the for you side of the mirror. I'm not a victim. I never use that language. But the other day, this is just a few weeks ago, I catch myself driving from my lovely yoga practice with Maria, feeling all beautiful and aligned. And I'm on my way to my massage therapist. So fathom, first of all, I live in a first world country. I am driving a car. I have just... I have the means and abundance to experience both these wonderful things, and I'm driving along. I hit every red light, every one of them. I am cut off once, and then I'm cut off again. There is some to-me profane language going on in my head, and it's coming out of my mouth. Like, if you knew the number of times I said asshole when I drive, can you relate? So, but also, I'm able at that moment to laugh a little, <laughs> Because here I am this, having this first world problem. And at the same time, so, you know, I've started to turn that mirror a little bit. And then I also start to think, hmm, wow, what if those red lights are preventing me from having an accident up ahead? And what if that person that cut me off, what if they're an angel sent to slow me down? And what if the next person was another angel. So I turned that mirror around and it came over me like I was laughing at myself, of course, and going, holy, wow, the mirror of perspective and how quickly, like how did I get out of alignment so fast? I am doing these soul loving, great things. I'm doing self care. And in the middle of all that, I started projecting these horrible energies onto other beings that I don't even know. So, but I switched it, and then I said, thank you. So, you know, whichever, like I said, whichever side of the mirror you're going to hold is going to reveal very different results in your life. So I could have arrived at my massage feeling pretty pissy. Instead, I arrived so grateful and had the best session ever. So the challenge is, you know, can we pick up the side of the mirror where, you know, the thick waist and the big belly we're reminded that, oh, that exists because I created life in this body. The big nose, well, it gets to experience the wonderful aroma every day that I get to all these great aromas. So it'll start to turn and you'll start to see things a little bit differently. So, you know, and at other times, that mirror is going to completely shatter. It's going to be in shards all over you all over the place. And it's going to expose these cracks and things, those vulnerabilities that we don't even want to look at, let alone let someone else witness about us. But in that moment, we somehow have to reframe that mirror and create a whole new perspective and a whole new way of life. And maybe, just maybe, we can come to peace with the tragedies and the things that happen in our lives that we will never understand why not in this life. And maybe, just maybe, we can also come to a place where instead of projecting all this energy, we accept the fact that what we're projecting at will never feel consequence for what we're feeling. So it's really about us and how we're viewing it. Um, so when you choose to pick up the side of the, the mirror, it's you know, even the for you side is going to be a bit foggy sometimes. You know, we can spend years on our mats practicing. We can meditate forever and we still may never get the answers. We never may know this big why. We, we may not arrive. Can you live with that concept that you may never arrive? I hope it doesn't happen in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw something like that in, didn't I? So I coach you with this. Um, you know, the fastest way I know, and many of you in this room know, to get back to that perspective, that for you side of the mirror for me, is through my heartbeat and my breath. So, how quiet can I get? 
so that the only sound I hear is my breath. How still can I get? You know when you're laying really still and actually the only movement, you can actually see your heart beating in your chest? Can you do that? And can you get conscious enough to recognize that transforma the transformation that's occurring in your inner life and start to move it and translate it out into the outer practice you present in this world? So this weekend, I, I challenge you and I want to leave you. I always, you know, when I write my blog, I leave coachable moments or here you go. So I ask, what will be revealed for you this weekend? How will you stay in the for me mirror of perspective? When you are getting held just a little bit too long and extended side angle, where are your thoughts going to go? <laughs> Is that class now going to be happening to you? Are you going to go there? Or are you going to stay and go, wow, you know what? I chose to be here. I made a powerful choice to be in this room on this mat. I chose, I even picked this teacher because <clears throat> she's good and I wanted to be with her. Can you stay there <laughs> when it's going to hurt? Because we know, you know, we got to hear Ruman talking and, and he said, you know, he talked about going into that fear. So can we go into that place? It's going to hurt a little bit. Can we go there and see what's there and explore it? I I really do hope you choose a, a depth of responsibility over the surface wave of fear. Because I think one of the biggest messages that has come to me when I said I would meditate on this over the next few months was I saw practitioners, I did different things, I meditated, and the word responsibility was constantly coming up for me. And for me, that was partially about the mirror. It's my responsibility to hold up that for me side of the mirror. No one's going to do it for me. So... I had to take that on. So I'm sorry that I can't tell you how to do this, that I am not a sage and with this gift to give to you to tell you how to pick up that side of the mirror. What I can tell you is that when you find some source of soul and some way to draw your, go in and go to that place, which, gosh, I'm kind of speaking to the choir here, but when you find that practice, you'll pick up the for me side a little more often. It'll be a little more easy for you to, to stop and to go, hmm, actually, I can choose how I feel right now. So I invite you to have an amazing weekend. Enjoy the adventures that your mind and body and breath are going to go on. Ride those waves. And I hope that everything that you hear, everything that you do, you take on and integrate into the DNA of your soul and start to translate it outside into the outer world. Namaste.